Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. This is the first time that Glenn and I have been in the same room recording a video in a long time. Say hello, Glenn. Hello, Glenn. Funny man. <laughs> Today we're going to look at an updated list of the best Metroidvanias on the Switch. Now we're going to put links to our other videos down in the description because there's quite a few that you're going to say, hang on, you've missed that, but we haven't. They're just in the other videos. With that said, what are our current favourite Metroidvanias on Switch? Let's find out. I'm going to get this one out of the way nice and early, and yes, it's Hollow Knight. There's a title that we've all really loved over the years, I think, if you're a Metroidvania fan, and Hollow Knight's probably up there at the tippity top for a lot of people, including myself. Now, Silk Song has been, I don't know if it's been delayed, but we haven't had much news of it. And if you watched the recent indie showcase, you'll notice that Nintendo, right down in the bottom corner, had the Silk Song logo, which has got quite a few of us in a fever pitch state. I absolutely loved Hollow Knight, it's an incredible game, it's got hundreds of hours of gameplay and even when young pretenders come along, like this recent Gleam Light, and hopefully I can do some more coverage of that, Hollow Knight holds strong and it just shines head and shoulders above almost all other Metroidvanias. <laughs> All right, my first one is a game that I did review for the channel. This is a game called Blasphemous. Now, this is an incredibly difficult Metroidvania. You play in a world called, I believe I'm saying this right, Svistodia, probably not, which has fallen to a curse known simply as the Miracle. You play as the Penitent One, a survivor of the massacre of the Silent Sorrow, and need to try and free the world from its terrible fate. What this basically equates to in terms of the gameplay is a brutal Metroidvania in which you use your sword, the Mia Culpa, finding relics and rosary beads as you go along to equip new powers to your character, fighting huge bosses, and traversing the world as you go. Very rewarding once you get into it, and I would fully recommend this one. I'm still giggling about Fistopia. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is the recently reviewed Phenotopia Awakening. Now while it's not, I would say, a pure Metroidvania, there are certainly Metroidvania elements here. Things like gaining new skills and abilities to traverse new areas, but it also took influence from Souls-like games with the stamina bar system and has some brutal boss fights. It's a lovely title, I'm really enjoying it, and what's nice to know is that the developers are already working on some new modes to make it a touch more accessible if you prefer a slightly easier experience. Yes, it takes cues from Zelda, mainly the early Zelda 2 title and it was really nice to just get back to some classic dungeons with loads of puzzles and a flute system ripped straight from Ocarina of Time. But if you check out our review, we'll put a link in the description, you'll soon see that it is a very good game indeed. <laughs> Right, the next one I want to talk about then is a bit of a classic, and this is Axiom Verge. Now, before I go on about this game, I'm going to say that my favourite Metroidvania of all time is Super Metroid. And this, for me, is a love letter to that particular game. You take on the role of a scientist named Trace in a world that feels very biomechanical, if you know what I mean. You'll pick up a host of tools and weapons as you go along that allow you to manipulate the world around you. And I loved the alien world with its far superior technology and exploring each part of it as you went along. Okay, thanks for that Glenn. My next one is a game called Salt and Sanctuary that I actually want to play through with you for a bit of co-op because apparently it's amazing in co-op. Now it takes a lot of inspiration from games like Dark Souls but let's be honest Dark Souls is essentially a 3D Metroidvania. This can be a tiny bit clunky, but it's also very deep. There's a very complex class system you can design and build your character around. There are a load of brutal boss fights, and each enemy will require a very specific strategy to defeat. It's not a game I've completed just yet, which is why I want to go through it on a bit of co-op, Glenn, but I'd certainly put it in my list of top Metroidvanias. The 
Lovely. Right, my next one then, quite similar to my previous one in some respects. This is a game called Out Buddies DX. Now, I did cover this in a buy and avoid list a while back, but I'd like to give it a bit more coverage because I believe it's a very good game. This is your typical Metroidvania fare. It doesn't do anything overly out of the ordinary, although you do have a robot companion that follows you around, and at times you can take over that robot and use them to solve certain environmental puzzles to be able to move on. You can also have a second player join in and take over the robot themselves and play with that second player. Player. Graphically the game looks like a souped up Spectrum game which I really found quite appealing. If you are looking for a new Metroidvania that has that classic feel, this one would most certainly do you well. Next up for me is The Messenger. This was a really interesting one because I was playing it through for review and for the first chunk of it, you feel like you're playing like an old Ninja Gaiden game and then suddenly it switches to a Metroidvania that has more of an open world aspect to it. There's also a really nice visual shifting mechanic which changes the pixel count on the screen and the style is very cool. It will shift from that 8-bit to that 16-bit sprite style. Now, as you'd expect, there's a load of character upgrades, new abilities, hidden levels, and tons of hidden areas and secrets, but I'm not going to lie, this is quite a difficult game as well. Soundtrack is really nice. Created by renowned chiptune composer, Rainbow Dragon Eyes. <laughs> Glenn, I've never heard of Rainbow Dragon Eyes. But that is an awesome name. Oh man. Well anyway, it's a brilliant game. Well worth it. And I'm pretty sure it's had some DLC. Next up then is a game called Rain World, which I've only put a couple of hours into so far, but it's one where the world itself, the actual world building drew me in. You play as a, a slug cat creature, I think it's called, and you are under constant threat of the rain. If it comes down too hard, you need to try and get out the way of it before it drowns you. As well as that, of course, you have the constant threat of predators, predators, <laughs> predators, predators, that's right, isn't it? Perfect. Lovely, okay. And it is quite a difficult game. One thing I will say is it doesn't necessarily explain its mechanics particularly well to start with, and it does take a bit of a while to get into because of this, but once you are into it, it's very engrossing actually, a very good game indeed. Plus it has a lovely art style, the way it displays its dystopian world whilst using pastel colours, a combination you wouldn't necessarily put together, works incredibly well. Definitely. I think there's a new Predator film coming out soon. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Because of my accent, because I'm from London, we don't really bother with T's very much. So normally I would have just said Predator, but I knew if I'd have said that, a load of people with the comments would have said, what's a Predator? So I tried to say it properly and ballsed it up completely. Okay, that was awesome. Next up we've got Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which is a gothic horror side-scrolling action RPG Metroidvania set in 18th century England. Now, I must admit, when this came out, I played it and I really enjoyed it, but then I went online and everyone was like, oh, there's loads of input lag, there's all these issues, which it's not that I didn't notice them, but I didn't really care. But actually, they've worked hard to bring improvements to the game, although the patch took quite a while. I think it, it took quite a lot of coding and going back to basics. They have worked hard to bring it up to potentially the standard it needed to be. There's still a little bit of slowdown, but it's nowhere near what it was when it launched, and I think it's the time to pick it up if you're after a brilliant Metroidvania. Yeah, so this game was developed by Koji Igarashi, who himself was a big part of the Castlevania series for many years, and this game itself, Bloodstained, came via a Kickstarter campaign. Now, I think I would be fair in saying that because of some of the, um, the glitches you mentioned, or, or the slowdown certainly, maybe it didn't get the best reception at that time, but I think it's since been uh, recognized as the good game that it is. Dandara is without a doubt one of the most exceptional Metroidvanias I've ever played. 
In fact, there's been a recent update for the game that's made me go back to it, and I forgot just how clever the mechanics are. Things like the gravity shifting. So sometimes you'll enter a new area and you jump from wall to wall, but as you enter that area, it may rotate to reflect the new center of gravity. And you'll have to figure out, looking at the map, as the map stays within its orientation, exactly where you are. There are lots of little puzzles, but much of them come from the way that you can only stick to certain surfaces. You can shoot at enemies as well which adds to the intensity and the difficulty and despite quite a few people being pixel fatigued there are small animation details which give this one a little bit of a step up or a leg up on other pixel art games. Yeah this game recently received a physical edition via Super Rare Games. It got one of their standard limited releases as well as one of their special releases. They actually sent us a copy. I was going to stick it in the next physical games video that we did but this is just as good a time to talk about it as any. It comes in this really nice sturdy box. Now when it comes to special editions for me, the box, the quality of the box, is just as important, as strange as it might sound, as the actual contents inside it. In terms of what you do get inside it though, you get this hardback guidebook, which includes a walkthrough of the game, and also some concept art as well. A really nice inclusion that actually, and to go with that you get the soundtrack of the game over two CDs, as well as some other little trinkets. You get a poster of the game, a key ring, an enamel pin, a pack of playing cards, which is interesting, and obviously you get the game itself. I haven't actually played this one, I know you've mentioned it a few times in the past, so I'm actually now looking forward to jumping in and giving this one a go. I had to include Dead Cells in this list. I know it's not a pure Metroidvania in air quotes, but you do unlock new abilities that allow you to access new areas of the maps. And despite it being a roguelite, the fact it has that in there really does end up making it feel more like a Metroidvania at times. It's absolutely brilliant. If you're unaware of what this one is, it comes from Motion Twin, and has a lot of Prince of Persia in terms of the handling of your main character. It's very precise and accurate, and you'll be using different weapons of three different classes, which you can then upgrade as you progress, choosing your route through the stages, again, dependent on the abilities that you've got, like the jumping off walls to reach that specific route, and then hopefully defeating the king at the end of the game. Every time I drop back in to capture some footage of this game, I just get completely hooked. I think I played about an hour and a half just to get Glenn 30 seconds of footage, and that's a testament to how damn good it is. There's a few DLCs as well, but this one should be on every Nintendo Switch owner's list. And the final one for this list then is Ori and the Blind Forest. Now Mark, I haven't played this one. It's one that I've looked at many times. You have though, so do you want to tell us a bit about it? Yeah, first things first, it's a decent game. You play, it takes place in the forest of Nibble, which is dying, and essentially the opening maybe half an hour is a beautiful animation in its own right. It takes influence from things like Studio Ghibli and it looks incredible. The music's amazing. You control it in typical Metroidvania fashion. If you've played, you know, Hollow Knight, it has a bit of fluidity in its motion in comparison to that game. You, you can run around a lot more quickly, but essentially there's a lot of platforming in, in there. There's new abilities that you uncover. The enemies are quite tricky. I think the star of this show is the world that they've created. It's quite dark, but it's also really vivid and beautiful. There is a demo of this one as well. I'd strongly recommend if you've not played it, checking that demo out because it's quite a long demo. It's just enough, I think, to give you a good taste of it. But the soundtrack, the visuals, it's, it just has everything. And Glenn and I were just saying, what is it with the best ones on our list being the cheapest? I think you also make a good point about that world building as well, because Metroidvania mechanics in themselves are not that difficult, are they? you know, return somewhere later. But that world that's built, I think that's when you get a good Metroidvania. Fantastic. As we mentioned at the start of the video, do go and check the links in the top description so you can go and see the other Metroidvanias that haven't been mentioned because more than likely you'll find them over there. It's so nice to be back in the same room again, isn't it, Glenn? And yeah, making videos for you guys is a pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get a few more videos out with the both of us in it from this point onwards, which would be really nice, wouldn't it? Like the old days. Yeah, and a big thanks to our patrons, as always, and for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Lovely job, yeah. Take care, stay safe, until next time, happy gaming. And I know what Glenn wants me to say, because <laughs> I can see the joy in his eyes. See ya!